Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Sorry it's been a while, but between running my convenience store here in upstate New York and running in a local election, my time is somewhat limited. It sucks when your life cuts into your chest, but oh well. Anyway, folks, this is round six of the FIDE Grand Prix Tournament. It's the fourth in a series of tournaments for qualification to get in the candidates final. And those and that tournament from the candidates final determines who plays Magnus Carlsen for the world championship. Two world class players is white Maxime Fiche Lagraf, MVL as they call him from France, and Sergei Karyak, another world class player, originally from Ukraine, now representing Russia. Let's get to it. Fiche Lagraf is white, MVL, and Karyak is black. It's going to be at Berlin. You've seen this a couple of million times, so I'll just breeze through it. 97. I remember I saw an article once where somebody talked about Vladimir Kramnik years ago when he worked on the Berlin with computers. He wanted to stop all white players from playing E4. He's, he's, he hasn't succeeded yet, but damn near. At least at the world class level. D4, hitting the bishop, pawn takes. Pawn takes bishop b6. Computer shows only a half a point advantage for white, but I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to play. The only thing I don't like is a knight on d2 is blocking in the dark squared bishop. We'll see how that works out. Rook d1, typical. Real pay move. Bishop, that's an annoying pin. h3, kicks it. He backs the bishop up. Now, queen to b3 is the computer's choice, or e5. I kind of like queen to b3, honestly. One, it puts the queen directly on the king and also has that, that annoying pin on the knight on f3. Besides, they go a3 instead. Must be something that MVL has been working on. I will have to say, though, Maxime is not having a very good tournament. a6 to kick the bishop. The bishop goes back to f1. Really don't want it anywhere else. You don't want it here. There's a little block in the rook. Here, not a very good spot for it. Neither is here, so I think that's a good move. A4 was the only other choice for the bishop. Or excuse me, yeah. Bishop to A4. Rook D8. E5. Finally opens it up a little bit. Knight up to D5. Interesting choice. That's a good spot for that knight. Being that white has no pawns on these two files to harass it. So only a knight or a bishop can chase it off. Knight to c4, hitting the bishop. Bishop just tucks it back away on a7. Let's just take a look at this here. Tiny advantage for white, we'll call it even. The tension is still there with the e5 and d6 pawn. I think MVL throws the dice here. He's not been playing well. He's going to throw something at him. He goes G4. And that, I'm not so sure, even though the computer shows a minute advantage for white. He's exposing his king terribly. Bishop G6. And Bishop to G5. Tiny advantage for black now, but it's tiny. We'll call it even. Finally, the pawn takes. Pawn takes. H6, kicking the bishop. Interesting position. I'm not sure if pushing those pawns in the G and H file for white is going to pan out, but we'll see. But this is very annoying right here. This bishop is just bearing right down. That's a good spot for that bishop. Bishop backs up. B5 hitting the knight. Knight goes to A5. Okay. Eventually might go rook over. Knight comes in here. Hitting the bishop, we'll have to see. Queen to c8. He does do the rook to c1. And now c5, stopping that knight from going in there. Now the queen and the knight are guarding c6. b4. c4. Now white gets his pass pawn through. Excuse me, black gets his pass pawn through. I don't know about this position, honestly. This poor pawn is stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. The knight is temporarily guarding him. He's going to have to move it. He's going to have to move this pawn, but he can't because of the bishop, which means he'll have to waste the temple and move the king. So I'm not real thrilled with white right here, to be honest with you. 
White goes knight to d4. If instead e6, some of you are wondering about that move. After f takes bishop g2, bishop b8. It's a small advantage for black, but I'm not really sure on that one. That was a computer suggestion. After knight to d4, queen comes up. And that's a chance for the knight to move. Get out of the, get out of the rim of the board. As we all know, the knight on the rim is grim. Rook A to D8. Queen F3. That pin is still there. And this is the, I think, where white starts getting in trouble here. Knight takes. Pawn takes. Bishop takes. Knight takes. Rook takes. Now, white's down a pawn, but look at the queen side. One, two, three pawns against white's one. This pawn is isolated. White's king's exposed. That's why the computer gives it a, a 1.75 advantage. E6, just to try to bust up the pawns. F6, that pawn's a goner. And this is where I think Maxime miscues. It's a natural move. He goes rook c to d1. And now it's an over two point advantage coming up on two and a half point advantage for white. Or excuse me, black. Rook takes, rook takes. The queen had taken instead after rook to d8, queen to e2. And it looks bad for white here. Rook takes, c3, here comes the pawn. I don't think white's long for this game. Bishop g3 to hit the queen. Queen just goes to c6, looking to trade. He can't, of course. Pawn, rook to c1. Queen to c3, here we go. Bishop to g2. Queen e1 doesn't really do much. So after queen to b3, queen to e3, queen takes, pawn takes, knight to d5, and white's just getting killed. Absolutely kill. After bishop to g2, queen takes the other pawn. Now you got three connected passers. It's it's over. We're on move 35. Rook to d8. Queen to f3, just trying to get something, but there's nothing here. For those of you that are wondering about rook takes, after bishop takes, queen takes, queen c4, and... Still, White's still doomed. After queen to f3, queen to c4. Queen comes up, try to get some counterplay desperately, but it's not going to happen. Queen takes the pawn. Another pawn. Now you're down three pawns. It's a disaster. f4. Try to get some counterplay. But after queen to e3, that's it. Maxime Vichet Le Graf from France. World class player resigns. Interesting win by... Karyakin, who lately, the last couple of years, you don't hear about Karyakin much. As much as Nakamura, maybe, and Carlson, and uh, MVL, and uh, Caruana, and Aronian. I don't know. Maybe he's just keeping it low. I know he's recently remarried, so maybe he's spending his time with his new bride. Rook d1 is the continuation. And after queen takes, bishop takes, you're down... A rook and two pawns. The game is over. Anyway, folks, that's the game from round six of the fourth FIDE Grand Prix series leading up to the candidates' final. I hope you enjoyed it. I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. And I also want to thank all my new subscribers lately. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you to subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.